Master Tavern Keeper's History of the Old World. go, another round, courtesy of young Heinrich here. Ach, thank you very much. Oh, no, 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 my pleasure. But uh, I am not so young, Master Tavern Keeper. <laughs> well, you're younger than us too, that'll do. But speaking of youngins, we probably ought to uh, check up on the neophytes. It'll be dark soon, and as I was pouring these here ales... I noticed the waning moor sleep loomed particularly large against the sky of the setting sun. It'll be a night to be on our guard, I think. Oh, yeah, in that case, indeed it will then, Master Tavernkeeper. And to whilst we are on the subject, the conversation we have been having about legions of demons pouring in from the north has caused me to remember something my grandpapa once told me. Oh, really? What was it that old Frederick Lewin said? Yeah, he mentioned to me a legend about a menagerie of demons who once preyed upon the uh, people of the world, having escaped their imprisonment through a gateway in the sky. That was, of course, until Moor, the god of death, the dead, dreams and dreamers took them up in his embrace and granted a great death upon all of them. Afterwards, my grandpapa said that he uh, created a second moon from the corpses of the demons so that none would forget the debt that they owed him. Ah, yes. I too heard this in my youth many years ago. Ach, really? I've never heard that. But then, I've never been to the Empire. I travelled extensively through Estalia after leaving Albion, before eventually coming to uh, rest here in Tabarro. Actually, at the seminary in Albion, we were taught something slightly different. We were taught that when the two polar gates collapsed, gigantic blocks of warp stone were cast into the sky and coalesced into the uh, Chaos Moon to circle the planet endlessly spreading its taint over the land of which it passed. Ah, uh, yes. During my time amongst the Norse, I heard the same spoken of by the whalers and sailors with whom I worked. But let us not get distracted, gentlemen. Cedric, you were about to tell us about the lay of the land of Albion. Oh, yes, indeed it was. But as you just mentioned it, what was the name of your old Norse whaling ship? You did tell me it once, but... Uh, Completely slipped my mind now. Something quite unusual, wasn't it? Ah, it was indeed. It was called the uh, Ormond Barden, or uh, Bearded Serpent in common parlance. Ah, oh, yes, that was it. I knew it was something unusual. Anyhow, uh, you're right. I very easily get distracted. Uh, so, in order to uh, keep me on the straight and narrow, I'm going to use a uh, storytelling device of yours, Septimus. And uh, try not to go off on too many tangents if I can. Oh, the uh, homage honours me. I hadn't realised you'd been paying such close attention to my uh, waffling. Oh, why, of course I do. Even the most learned teacher is still a student at heart. There is something that can be learned from everyone, and I do mean everyone. Only the wise will admit that they truly know nothing. Merely parts and glimpses of the truth and that they must continue to seek knowledge everywhere they go. Ah, well, I cannot disagree with such profound sentiment. Ugh, well, anyhow, uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that we're going to do a little uh, imaginary tour of my island, as if you'd come by ship. Basically, it'll be like my journey out of Albion, but in reverse. Ah, how exciting and intriguing. Please, please, continue. Right you are. Well, let's just dive in then. The seas surrounding the island are uh, 
Cold, of course, being so far north, but not as cold as, say, the Sea of Claws or the Sea of Chill. For, as I mentioned earlier, the warm currents that the Old Ones redirected long, long ago from the south still bathe the coastline. This means there's a surprising amount of life in the waters there. And as you sail towards the Misty Isle, imagine this now, Heinrich, yeah? You're as likely to see some uh, juvenile monsters from the deep as you are a whale or shoal of fish. For it's used as a breeding ground by many sea creatures. Oh, yeah, my goodness. That sounds rather dangerous, though. Ach, exactly. And what with the permanent myths with we uh, truthsayers have conjured up around the old uh, white cliffs of the island, and the lack of beaches that boats can easily access, Albion is not an easy prospect to land upon. And then, of course, its cliff tops are patrolled by the giants that you mentioned earlier. That be true. And another hazard for many coming from the south and east is this: they land on the wrong island, and uh, have the misfortune of mistakenly coming ashore upon the. Uh, Isle of Whites. The Isle of Whites? Oh no, not Whites. Whites. Ah, uh, I think he means Whites. Those of the uh, undead variety. That's right, that's what I said. The Isle of Whites. It's just off the southern coast, you see. It's quite an unpleasant place. Surrounded by uh, pointy, jagged rocks. And the uh, strait of water between the Isle and the mainland is extremely treacherous. Much like the waters off Tabara here, between the uh, Isle of the Sirens and Fool's Rocks. Now, of course, I just mentioned that the waters around Albion are warmer than you'd think. But not in this stretch of water they aren't. The water there is as cold as the grave. And the island itself no better. Cold wind blows across it day and night. Not a single tree to shelter behind can be found on the whole isle. Not one. In fact, there's not much flora there at all. Just a few outcroppings of uh, lichen and hardy coastal plants. And, of course, uh, the ubiquitous albionite fog hangs particularly thick in the air there, making it feel colder and even more dank and oppressive than the mainland. But the place is not bereft of features. Oh, no. It's dominated by uh, numerous large grass-covered mounds, each a man-made hill within which is the burial tomb of a mighty king of ancient Albion and their warriors. These uh, barrows, as they're called, remain uh, all but untouched and undisturbed. For what kind of fool is going to venture into the realm of the dead? Oh, yeah, yeah, indeed, Master Alchemist. Oh, actually, that said, I did meet a man once, one of the most cunning and infamous of the young men of the Falions. Hailing from the tribes that live in and around the caves on the opposite side of the strait to the Isle of Wight. And uh, someone who had long been intrigued by legends of uh, ancient treasures and artifacts of great power that are said to adorn the bodies of the dead there. His name was Aberlin, and he had gone missing in uh, mysterious circumstances a full year before our paths crossed. It was as my companions and I were trudging towards our boat down on Muddy Point that we came upon him. The conversation had uh, turned to griping, and our resolve to leave Albion behind and start anew was on the wane, as the reality of the path ahead truly began to dawn on each of us. What happened was this. Out in the mist ahead of us, down the road, we suddenly heard the panicked scream of a man, followed by muttering of what sounded like two men arguing. The two young blood brothers who were accompanying us, Aidan and Braden, immediately pulled out their axes, readied their slings, and moved to the fore to protect us five truth sayers. I joined them though. Mashalele hailed high. Ooh. Ach, no, Heinrich, not this again. Mastik, I mean. Mastaf of light. Ah. Anyhow, out of the mist came a lone man. His face was pale and wan. His beard, white, and his hair matted and knotted with dried seaweed, and he was dressed in naught but a faded rags and a tattered tartan. He was staggering about, legs weak beneath him, and he did not see us. He was seemingly in conversation with someone else, someone that we could not see, 
and he was muttering incoherently before puncturing whatever he had just said with angry punches to the air. But as he grew nearer, it became clear he was no old man, despite his whitened hair, but rather still a young man, perhaps no more than uh, 25 or so summers. I did not sense anger from him, not anger per se, rather I felt a, a strangeness, a brokenness about him. I bade Aidan and Braden put away the weapons and approached the uh, dishevelled man myself, chanting the old charm that we use on the uh, oldest giants to return them to a uh, brief reprieve from their senility back into clarity. Nothing happened at first, of course, but then, suddenly, the Ogham on my began to glow, and a nimbus of light danced around the distraught warrior's head. Before our eyes, his sagging posture sloughed off him, and, like a butterfly flooding its newly grown, wrinkled wings with blood, his former strength spread down his spine into the rest of him. He then stood proud and fierce once more and looked about him. Clarity returned to his eyes, and at last he saw us and spoke. Potek, preserve me. I must get back to the sea. I must get back to the sea. Oh, oh, they're, they're gone. I quickly strode past the others, who were still wary of the man, and moved to take him by the shoulder. But he held up his hand to me, and I stopped. He blinked. I gave him a smile, and he returned it. At that point, one of my fellow truthsayers, actually, uh, Merchad, the man you knew back in Nordland, Heinrich. Ah, yeah, yeah, the hermit from the uh, forests outside of Sausenmund. The very same. Anyhow, I got Merchad to conjure up some uh, fire, whilst the others found some dried sticks and wood to keep it going. Much harder than you think in Dank Albion, I can tell you. After that, we set up a campfire off to the side of the road and bade our uh, new friend rest his weary limbs. He told us his name was Aberlein. His name and deeds were uh, known to each of us, of course, although he was much changed, it seemed. He said that he intended to go to the Isle of Wight to retrieve the fabled box of Fion from the old hero's barrow. Thank you for your kindness. Yes, it is said to grant the bearer immunity to the dangers of mortal life. With such a thing, I could become the greatest warrior in our tribe. I'll be taking my coracle to cross the strait. I must do this thing alone. I'm... Hey, wait. Wait, wait. I've... I remember. I've already been. I remember. I already took my coracle. I rode across the icy waters. I was almost washed out to sea by the currents. At this point, I could feel the coldness rising in him, and I began to chant again under my breath, allowing him to continue. But I fought the waters, and I won. The rocks too were treacherous, but easy enough for a man in his coracle to manoeuvre through. I found a cave in the cliff to hide my boat and descended up to the cliff top. It was a lifeless place, the wind cutting and cold. The mists swirled about me in eddies and vortices, but I already knew my way. The tomb of Fion was the hill closest to where I'd come ashore. I peeled up at the sky to check my bearings when I heard a whisper in my ear. Come hither. And the fog parted. Ahead stood a barrow, a stone doorway unearthed in its flank. Bones and skulls and rusted armor 
the weapons were strewn about the ingress. Again, I heard a voice, this time coming from the blackness within. Come hither. Fear would have cowed a lesser man, but not I. I knew this was a test of my courage, and I would not falter. I walked towards the entrance. I could feel cold fingers at my back. Some were pushing, some were pulling. I ignored them all. Closer and closer I stepped. The wind became stronger, and the wheeling, a moaning, was weaved into its threads. But I ignored it. I would not falter. Suddenly, out of the tomb, stalked a pair of skeletal warriors, armed with weapons of old. Their movements were sluggish and slow. I cut them down and I stepped within. There was a light at the far end of the stone corridor inside, to the resting place of Fion himself. A candle burnt with green fire set upon a stone table there. I moved quickly towards it. Upon their bronze box, I knew I'd found my prize. I did not hesitate. I leave it open their box with my dagger, but to my surprise, it was empty. A, a void, a, a black pit, out of which chains flew. They, they tried to instare me. They were wrapping around my limbs. I fought them off. I pulled myself away from the box. I dragged myself out of the tomb. Uh, I was almost free when I tripped over a freshly killed body of a man, face down, dead in the doorway. I stood. I kicked him over. But then, Poltek protect me. What horrific memory is this? I, I, I see, I see my own screaming face staring back at me. At that very moment, Murch's fire blinked out of existence, plunging us all into darkness. Thankfully, he quickly conjured another, but the man was gone. No sign of him whatsoever. Instead, just a small bronze box lay where he had sat. Needless to say, we did not touch it, and left immediately for Muddy Point, in great haste, even though a night had fallen. By holy mermidia, t t t terrifying Ach, oh, you're telling me. But one thing for sure was this. Our resolve to leave Albion was reinvigorated tenfold. <laughs>